Hey guys, Chris Gustafson, Eastern Heights Baptist Church. Welcome to our Wednesday night lesson. Glad to have you guys tuning in with us. This morning we're going to be uh, talking just briefly about the 12 tribes of Israel. Now, if you've grown up in church, you probably have heard about the 12 tribes of Israel, and you're a little bit familiar with the story that goes with them, but let's look a little bit more in depth into them. So as we look at the 12 tribes, we happen to know that they all shared the same dad, but they had different moms. You see there, uh, Leah and Zephah and Bilhah and Rachel. Uh, so each of the different tribes came, came from these four different wives that Jacob had. And you can see them there from Reuben, Simeon, Levi, Judah, Iskar, Zebulon, Gad, Asher, Dan, Naphtali, Joseph, and Benjamin. Uh, you uh, also probably know as we've been looking at the story of talking about Joseph and uh, that then uh, being in Egypt and the people then being set free. Moses take him into the wilderness. Joshua now probably gone into the land and they are dividing up the tribes. And so you can see there on the map how the tribes are divided up. But you will notice as you look at the map, you'll notice, okay, there's 12 there, 12 different tribes mentioned, but there's, there's no mention of Levi. Where's Levi? We're going to talk about how Joseph last Sunday was such an important person that they gave a tribe to each of his sons. So Manasseh that's there, and then Ephraim each became their own tribe. Levi, because they served the Lord, ended up not getting territory per se, but they ended up getting different cities that were spread out. This Sunday, we're going to talk about some of those cities that were very special that the Levites were to take care of. In Revelations, you might be familiar with the passage from Revelation chapter 7, where he talks about, I heard a number of those who were sealed, 144,000 from all the tribes of Israel, from the tribe of Judah, 12,000 from the tribe of Reuben, 12,000 from Reuben, from the tribe of Gad, 12,000, Asher. goes all the way down there on seeing all those different tribes that are there. But you may notice, if you look at it real quick, there's a tribe that's missing. And you notice that we now have the tribe of Joseph that's there, as well as his, his sons that are listed, but the tribe of Dan is missing. Why, why is that tribe of Dan missing? Interesting that the tribe of Dan is associated with apostasy, or that is of leaving the faith. And so we, we see that here. A couple of passages that talk about how Dan was slowly moving towards that. In Judges, we find out that the, the Danites set up for themselves the idol, and Jonathan, the son of Gershom, the son of Moses, and his sons were priests for the tribe of Dan until the time of the captivity of the land. So they continued. Uh, Dan fell into an apostasy of worshiping idols, and these individuals continued to do that. That tribe of Dan continued to practice that, and so they became associated with falling away from the faith. Another passage talks about in Kings, uh, the, the, the king created these two calves to worship because he didn't want the people going down and worshiping in Jerusalem area, so he created these, and he says it's too much for you to go down to Jerusalem. So this is where the kingdom is split, and you got the southern kingdom and the northern kingdom. Northern kingdom doesn't want them going down to the south to worship. So he creates these new idols, golden calves again, dating all the way back to the wilderness, and where's we put some Bethel, which was a, a prominent place of worship. But where's the other one located? Well, it's located in, in Dan. And so we, we see that. And then even when it was kind of Dan was getting his blessing, he's receiving a blessing from his father, there was even this allusion to Dan. It says, Dan will be a snake by the roadside, a viper along the path that bites the horse's heel so that its riders tumbles backwards. Uh, that could be taken one of two ways. It could be that Dan was going to be very fierce warriors, but it also kind of that association with a snake kind of shows where they may later be standing. Uh, you may see on the background here, I've got a, a picture that kind of shows the different tribes and ways of connecting them. If you look on there, you'll see different pictures that kind of fit each of them. We're going to talk about those uh, tonight about how they, they connect in there and those pictures, each of them tell a story. You might notice right away, you can see the, the crown that's up there for, for David. And then of course there is the, um, the breastplate that we see there. There's a Levi with a breastplate over there. And a couple of the others uh, you can find in stories that kind of connect them together with uh, knowing their story and knowing a little bit about them all come from stories from the Bible. And we'll, we'll look at a couple of those later. 
Of course, one of the other things uh, about the tribes that's important to remember is what's called the lost tribes and what happened to 10 of them. So a little history real quick. In Joshua, we got them. They each claim their territories, and they have. Uh, eventually, they become a kingdom united together. If you recall, they asked for a king. They said, we want a king. And so Saul became their king, started off really well, kind of became a bad king later. Then David came along, uh, first was in the south, then unified the entire kingdom. Later, Solomon comes along. And at that point, they become a mighty empire. Uh, were the most influential empire at that time, stretching across the, 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 the Middle East area there uh, from the Euphrates River all the way into Egypt was their influence because of uh, Solomon. Then Solomon's son comes to power and there's a civil war and they split and 10 of the tribes become the Northern Kingdom. They become known as Israel and two of the tribes down in the bottom become known as Judah. And so they're, they're divided that way. And eventually uh, the Syrian empire comes in and around 722 BC, they take over Israel and wipe it out. And the 10 tribes are taken off in the captivity. And what happens to them becomes somewhat of a mystery. We're not really sure what occurred with them. Later, Judah will also be taken and go into captivity. Uh, but they, they're able to kind of still maintain some of their identity, though that term Judah will become predominant in describing Jewish people. So we see this with the 12 tribes, the, the role that they played, starting with Jacob and then each of their kids becoming tribes. Uh, they go into the land, they claim it. And overall, the, what was the main role of these tribes was to point people to God and eventually to point them towards the Messiah. That would come. So 12 tribes play a really important role in that number 12 appears in a lot of places that we find out. Of course, the best example that we find that 12 later is when Jesus goes to pick his followers. And he decides that out of his followers to select a group of individuals that'll be his students that he's going to spend time on. And those students have to be how many? 12 of them. So he picks 12 and one of them ends up going apostate and betraying him, almost like the uh, tribe of Dan occurred. So there's a little background for you on the 12 tribes of Israel. I hope that'll get you into digging a little bit more into the word and growing to know more about them. So let me pray with you guys before we close out. Heavenly Father, it is amazing to look at your hand throughout history and the way that you were at work. God, that you, uh, you set up these individuals to become families, to become tribes, to set the groundwork for the arrival of your son. And Lord, we thank you because of what Jesus Christ has done. And by putting our faith in him, we are invited into your family. God, we thank you that as we look towards the future and we're unsure what's going to happen, the 12 tribes remind us that you are fully in control and we need only to trust in you. In the name of your son, Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Thanks for joining us. Uh, we hope these studies are help helpful to you, and we'll see you next week. God bless.